removing a stuck blade on a grinder. I only hand tighten my blades. You'll see at the end of the video how I do that. But when this happens, when it gets bound up or it gets binded up with something like a chainsaw stuck in a tree, the best way to do this for that I've learned is to smash it off. I use a hammer and chisel, go from the side. Sometimes I put it into a vise as you see here and I smash it. And I do this so I don't actually wreck the grinder itself. At which point I'm able to fit some channel locks to go around the arbiter or the retaining nut on the grinder. And at that point I can remove it and install a brand new blade. As you see here, I'm only hand tightening the blade so that I can use the grind and then I can also easily remove it without having to grab the grinding key. If you want to see the rest of the video, do have a detailed explanation on how I remove or the bunch of options that there are to remove a grinding blade, please continue to watch the video. Thank you if you've seen it this far. Hey guys, welcome back or to the channel. It's early in the morning. I'm still waking up. I want to talk about how we can get a grinder blade unstuck. So if you guys see here, you'll notice I have two of the same grinder. And you might be asking, why do you have a brand new one and a used one? Well, used one is the one that is with me every single day. Brand new one is my spare. I got a deal on buying two at once. These are seven inch grinders. And um, yeah, so the other day, I'm working all around and I'm cutting a piece of metal out. And as you can see, I have nothing left of this, this, this disc. Got the job done, and it got stuck, got binded up. This could happen if you're cutting a pipe, or like, you know, if you have a chainsaw, for example, it's completely different, cutting down a tree, and the tree comes over a little bit, it might bind up, and that's when you have a bit of a problem. With a chainsaw, you're gonna get stuck. So hopefully, uh... <laughs> anyways, moving on back to a uh, grinder. When that happens, it'll get jerked or whatever, whichever which way, and um, it'll tighten the blade. Typically, I only hand tighten my uh, my um, grinder blades onto the uh, grinder, and I've never had a problem. This is the first time I've actually had a problem where I couldn't get the, uh, the tool to take off the blade itself. So I put it into this kind of position. I go to take the blade off. So it actually goes in. It's kind of bent right now. There we go. And I pushed with all I could, everything I had, and it didn't go. That's exactly what happened. I ended up bending this a little bit. So, I'm gonna try it with uh, the brand new one that's not bent. One of the other things I do is I have the red off of the electrical tape on the handle. And then I put the red electrical tape on the cord, so I know where exactly the cord is, because sometimes we're working with multiple tools. We'll try this. Oh, no, nope, I'm going to bend this one too. Anyways, there's a bunch of ways we can do this. I've seen people where they take a wrench. Hopefully this one's big enough. I don't want to to get another one. I did put it on there, but I can't actually get that to grip, so no for that. Now, if this was a flat disc, like a flat er disc, we wouldn't have that issue. So, anyways, using this one, we got a little bit of grip there, but nothing. Again, you do the same thing with one of these. I just pull it off that way. One of the things I've done before too is I smash this off, or I uh, put it on a clamp. And I have done this, obviously. I have tried this attempt. Get one of these vice grips in place. Just like so. A little bit less. There we go. And then you take a hole or a punch. Wear safety glasses. And so we've got nothing. Now, one of the things we can do, will this one let me do it? No, oh, wow. They're completely different. Or unless they're 
No, they are completely different. I bought these exactly the same time. Boxes side by side. What I am going to be doing here is taking a chisel and smashing it into what is left of the grinding blade, effectively destroying the grinding blade, but releasing the retaining nut or armature for the grinder. We're going to hyperlapse, and I'm using the vise to hold it all still while I smash it to pieces. Again, this is to free up the retaining nut or armature. And you can see here, I'm using the channel locks to get it loose, and I successfully make this happen. So to recap, we've used everything from plumber's wrench to vice grips to a, to a vice itself, uh, chisel and hammer, chisel and punch. Channel locks end up finishing everything off after I smashed the uh, grinding blade and got things a little bit looser and able to actually fit in there to take the aperture off. And th this combination was the key to success. That was the worst one ever I've had to deal with. There you go. She's off. That's what's left of the thing. And basically it's just compression down for that. And I can put a new blade on. Now because of COVID, and I hope you guys are all being safe. Oh, they're in the truck. I'll be right back. Now we're back. I'm to get to the truck to grab some uh, blades. Now these are six inch blades. I'm gonna need a grinding blade today. So I'll show you the difference between the two. So that's your grinding blade right here, this bad boy. And, oh, it's for stainless. That's that's going to be more expensive. Did not realize that. Is this also for stainless? Stainless and steel. This one, the, the combo blade. And by combo, this is a lot thinner than what would be a grinding blade. Um, I don't have any grinding blades handy within reach. And this is your straight cut blade. So this is both for stainless and then mild steel, and this is just, it just says stainless on it, but obviously you can use it on mild steel too. I would believe this to be a bit more expensive. Now, this is a six inch blade. Yep, it says right there, it says the size, one eighth. Um, I'm just trying to see what the size on this one is. There it is, seven eighths. So again, tiny, and it's again, six inch, sorry, three sixty fourths times six inch. Um, what do you call it? You want to make sure your RPMs match your uh, your grinder. This is a 10,020 RPM, which this grinder only does, I think, 7,800. It'll say on it. At least it should. So I had to look it up. It's 6,600 RPM. Being as these are good to 10,000 RPM, we're golden. Again, we're doing grinding today. This is a combo disc. Um, whoop, you need to put that on. That's good. Oh no, it's loose. No, it's loose. What are we gonna do? You have two sides of this. This is where you need the collar. And then typically, um, well, I don't have a, and the disc uh, is the opposite of that. But you put this on here, just like so. This one's a bit funky, as you know. And I did not intend for that to rhyme. I have to clean off these threads. So I wanted to, to press the uh, rub button here. There we go. So like I was saying, press the button, I can loosen it, and I can tighten it just like that. There. Good to go. Put this in the normal position. Lock it. So we are going to cut something. One thing I like to do is I'll take the cord, I'll tie a knot in it. That way it can't uh, come undone if it gets caught on something. That's not the best knot, but you guys get the idea. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of metal. Now these, I can only get six inch blades because nothing else is available. We got power.
always unplug your blade or your grinder in this respect. Mine's going back in the tool case, so I'm just going to completely undo it. And the part that I wanted to kind of reiterate into the video is, see, simple as that. That's simply what I keep my blade. That way I can just quickly change them out and not have to worry about it. Still got to clean those threads though. And then, boom, and she's back to grinding. Simple as that. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you find this helpful if you ever get your grinder stuck. All sorts of tools you can use, but the best thing for me in this case, because it was so stuck, was to literally obliterate the blade, sm smash it to pieces, grab the old channel locks, put it in lock position, open it, get the get it all freed up, and uh, we were good to go. As you can see there, plain as day, with our new 6-inch blade on our 7-inch grinder, because that's all I could find. Thanks for watching. As I said before, I'll catch you all in the next one. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below, and I'll see you later. Peace! Ugh, ugh.